And this is an important week uh, because, yeah, maybe historically looking at the two schools, the two schools football programs, it wouldn't necessarily be a challenge most years, but we can expect a pretty good football game, I believe, on Saturday, ABC, noon Eastern at the shoe. What do you think, Tony? Yeah, uh, definitely. And I think people were surprised by the line opening up at like 17 and a half or something like that, um, or maybe even larger. But yeah, this is going to be uh, what I'm looking forward to seeing is stuff that we didn't get to see last week, how much of last week was was held back, how vanilla was the offense, was the defense. I know Luke Fickle is expecting some different things from Ohio State that they didn't show last week. So I am looking forward to seeing a, I guess, a fully operational Ohio State. And I know the players are intent on not letting up and not starting out well and just coasting from there. So that will be interesting to see if, um, one, if they can even mount that kind of start or, you know, get, get off to a good start and then keep the pedal down. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing an – like I said, a fully operational team uh, players today. Coach Larry Johnson talked yesterday about how Cincinnati is a, a Big Ten team in talent, demeanor, style, and so um, you know this should be pretty, uh, pretty rough, pretty hard fought. They know that uh, Cincinnati is going to come into Columbus fighting. I know Luke Fickle is trying to downplay it, but I don't know how you can. Yeah, I agree with you, Tony. Um, <clears throat> I took a few moments today. And uh, popped in the uh, the DVR of the uh, UCLA and Cincinnati game, and it's hard to come away and not be impressed with what Cincinnati was able to do uh, in that victory. They play very physical brand of football. Uh, everybody, Larry Johnson, I think um, uh, Ryan Day, and a lot of the coaches from Ohio State have already likened them to being like a Big Ten caliber opponent. And I think that's true both in physicality and also in how good this team is. I think if you put them in the Big Ten right now, they'd be threatening uh, Indiana, Rutgers, Maryland, Purdue, Northwestern, you know, to be middle of the pack in that part, maybe even better uh, than, uh, than that. I know they're 27th in the coaches poll and 28th in the AP poll this week. So they're just on the verge of being ranked. And obviously, if they lose to Ohio State, they'll fall back a little bit. But they've got the potential to go on and win the American Conference, beat uh, Central Florida, their nemesis from a year ago, and uh, put themselves in a New Year's Six Bowl game. Uh, that would be a great uh, goal for them. And obviously, uh, we've talked a lot about you know, Luke, Luke Fickle was the coach for Ohio State in 2011, was an assistant coach before that and after that, worked for Jim Trestle and Urban Meyer. So he's in two pretty good uh, coaching trees. And uh, he'd love nothing more than to pull this off because I don't think he envisions being at Cincinnati uh, forever, although it's a great school and a great community for him to raise his kids, he and his wife uh, to raise their kids. But I think he's upwardly mobile after winning 11 games last year as a thought that I should be coaching at a Power 5 conference school and places like Tennessee and Florida State are going to be looking for coaches at teams. Uh, maybe some others, hard to say. But uh, I think Fickle, if with another good year at Cincinnati, uh, possibly a conference championship, uh, could be a, uh, a thick contender uh, for something like that. And you got the players at Cincinnati. You got kids on, on that team from the, as they say, the tri state area, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky who really, for the most part, weren't given the time of day by Ohio State. Uh, they got a couple of kids who transferred uh, from Ohio State uh, down there uh, with Blue Smith, a wide receiver, and also uh, Garen Prater, who was a walk-on from Cincinnati Wyoming High School, I believe, who transferred down there as well to get a scholarship. So uh, I don't know how much those guys are going to impact this game or if at all, but – uh, there's a chip on the shoulder of the players at Cincinnati as well. So they're going to play harder than they've ever played before. And uh, this is their Super Bowl. They've beaten UCLA twice and Virginia Tech once in the last 13 months. So they've played with Power 5 schools, and now they get to play with one of the best of them. Can I just jump in? Would you rather be at Cincinnati, Tennessee, or Florida State right now? 
That's a great question. Uh, I think if you're going to pay me $5 million, like they're playing those guys at Tennessee, Pruitt, and uh, that clown Taggart at Florida State. Uh, you sound like and, me, Steve. I go on a Florida State show, and that's what I've been trying to tell them for I a mean, while. I'm sorry. Keep you're going. You're going to pay me that much money. I'll go there and go three and at uh, three and nine, just like everybody else does. So. Yeah, I was going to let I, I can live that sweet, sweet buyout life when it doesn't work out. <laughs> I mean, he's probably making one five at Cincinnati as a guess. I doubt he makes a whole lot more than that. And they don't have the TV money in the American, obviously, that the SEC or the ACC, the Big Ten, the Big 12 have. So uh, I think he's got he has positioned himself very well with a good season in 2019 to put one on top of another to jump off and get a pretty good power five job. Yeah, you'd mentioned all the Ohio guys. I mean, I think I did a count, and it was more than 70 players from the state of Ohio who were either lightly recruited, under-recruited, or not recruited by Ohio State who are going to come in spitting bullets, you know, getting the opportunity to play against the team that more than likely they grew up rooting for. I mean, not every kid in the state of Ohio grows up rooting for Ohio State, but, you know, the majority of them do. And I, mean, I think it, I think it'll be a really good game. I'm not going to get ahead of myself and get into my prediction at this point, but uh, you know, I, watching that UCLA game, I, I, I am going to sit there and say that Dorian Thompson Robinson did everything he could to lose that game, and he was he was successful awesome. with eight with eight completions, doing a couple of Tate four CA fumbles where he caused he he forced his own fumbles and and whatnot. But uh, you know, don't don't take anything away from UC. They're a salty bunch, you know. You gotta, you gotta respect what Luke Fickle's done there. A lot of respect to Mark Freeman, former Ohio State player as well, who's led that defense. Ryan Day made a phone call when he was looking to put together staff, and and Marcus said, "Thanks, but no thanks. I'm I'm going to ride with what I got here." Um, you know, it, Cincinnati's going to come in, un, you know, as as an underdog, but it's not going to be for lack of heart. For those of you who know Super Bowl lore, uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson did his best Gary Garo Yepremian, uh, where he you know tried to throw him, batted it up in the air, and and uh, so forth and so on. Claire, uh, Cincinnati's coming to town. Yeah, so I wanted to dovetail a little bit on what Kevin was saying about that. You know, obviously UCLA turning the ball over, but um, it, it was a balance of of UC taking away the ball and uh, UCLA turning it over. This is a very aggressive defense, and you're not just seeing it with takeaways, but some of these packages and looks that they're really going to be bringing after Justin Fields. Um, and, and kind of what Tony was saying, too, we, we saw a very vanilla offense, but we saw a vanilla defense, and I don't necessarily think it's a terribly bad thing right away. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons it's vanilla, obviously, is because they didn't want to show their hand to Cincinnati and kind of going forward, but... We also have to remember that Justin Fields has only been in the system for eight months and he's only going to, you know, Ryan Day talked about only have a certain set of plays uh, that they kind of have a, a starter pack that they know they definitely want to run and they adjust as the game goes forward. My main concern about Ohio State and Cincinnati is quarters two through four, um, watching them kind of watching Ohio State let off the gas a little bit. When I saw UC play four quarters against UCLA, that was a boxing match of a game. Um, and they certainly didn't give up even when it looked like uh, they could have. So that's definitely what I'm looking for is uh, Ohio State protecting the football, clock management. Um, we definitely need to see um, Ohio State uh, kind of picking up some of this aggressive UC defense.